Um, so for the first session, uh, we actually have a group of three students from Dunman High School, Singapore, uh, who will share with us their experiences in using Python to empower and enrich the lives of high school students. Uh, so we'll hear from them now. Thank you. Uh, good morning, everyone. Uh, as Mr. Key has mentioned, we are three students from Tamil High School in Singapore. It is our honor here today uh, to be here today to present to you HiPy Python for High School students. In this presentation, we would like to share with you probably uh, shallow and basic knowledge of Python in an effort to make high school life a better, a better experience. Technology is often likened as the shadow of mankind, where technology goes. Uh, well, human goals, technology follows. Indeed, indeed, technology has shed light on, on, on the life of everyone and, of course, the high school students. Nowadays, phone calls and short message services are no longer novel to us. WhatsApps and maybe video calls are increasingly becoming a norm. Of course, with the almighty computer, we can send emails and share resources with everyone conveniently and easily. And down to the individual level, the larger and larger screen never fails to bring you so much visual enjoyment. And of course, we cannot forget the myriad mobile games and utilities available on, on all the app stores. Yet at some point in time, we are just wondering, is technology really so advanced and so far away? Can we really make our own life better with our own hands? When we think about it, maybe it's really possible. Uh, now Shuya will be presenting on our first project. Before I introduce you this uh, application, I would like to share a story. My friend told me a grateful experience that he had a crush on a girl in middle school, but he was not sure about how the girl felt about him, so he was afraid of telling her as he scared that they could no longer maintain friendship if he spoke out. Um, but he only knew that the girl had liked him in middle school when they were in high school, but they were apart for a long time at that time. They could develop a meaningful relationship, but they missed the chance. And this story reminded me of a lot of um, similar experiences that uh, friends of similar age shared online. So with all these pities in mind, we developed this application DHS crashes. This application is developed using Google App Engine and Python 2.7. It is for users to indicate the person that you crashes on. And if he or her also likes you, uh, the system will help you tell each other. It avoids embarrassing and worrying about the confession, and you can know each other's thoughts if both of you like each other. And this is how the data module of this app is designed. It is quite simple. And basically, you can sign in with Google account. Our users is only limited to our school uh, students because it's more convenient for us to manage the users as we can just use the school-wide email system. And new users are required to update their profiles. And Nickname, gender, age, and intro in the database are displayed here. And this is the main page of our application. This is the very first application we have created using GAE. The interface is a bit childish. Okay. And one of the highlights of the design principle is the quotes shown in this box. It changes with every action, uh, with every different action, right? These are the codes under different functions that are uh, used to di display the message. For example, when you do not add anyone in the people you like, it will show this message to encourage you. If you deleted the person you like, the app will comfort you with this message. And you are able to search person using the search function. And if you cannot find the person, it will ask you to invite him or her. And this is the code for invitation function. 
the invitation email is the main feature that for us to increase our user popula population. And initially, users can only add two person in um, the people you like. But upon request of our users, we add the level function. The higher level of the user, the more person you can add to like. And by submitting the account of the people you like, you'll get this. And there is a number in front of the app, uh, the, in front of the name. And if you submit more, it will become like this. But this app is not, um, when it doesn't mean that we are uh, encouraging a more complex relationship. The feature is um, more of maintaining a good friendship with others, so don't take it in the wrong way. <laughs> And crushes is the main function of our application. If the person you have a crush on also likes you, it will like it show here. Okay, never mind. <laughs> if the person you crushes on also have a crush on you, um, then email will be sent to both of your account. Uh, then you will find the person's name. Then you will find the person's name will become pink, and others in the box are deleted simultaneously. And with half of the heart shows that uh, your partner agreed to declare the relationship. And if you click on this button, your relationship will be declared. And if both of you want to declare, we will have a news feed. The news feed is an add-on feature. It, allow, it allows users to post their current relationship if they both want to. And it will display here. We added this feature because we realized that we need something to attract the users. And keep them uh, active on the app. And the news feed, together with the invitation function that I've mentioned in the search function, um, are the two features that we designed to get more users. Uh, this application was the most popular application among all the projects we have done uh, in term one. It shows that students really welcome application that developed by peers to solve interesting problems of young people. <laughs> and this very, this very first application built our foundation of using Python in other platforms. We have not only learned the knowledge of programming, but also gained uh, the first idea of how to create a how a welcome application should be created and how the features should be designed to be suit the needs of the users. And the popularity of the application encourages us to proceed and explore more on this road. Next, I will pass the time to our second speaker, Song Kai, to present our second project. This is a typical day of mine. Yeah, today I want to eat Korean food in our canteen. But when I look at the situation of the canteen, wow, there are so many people and I should really consider if I should be buying food at this point of time. And yay, yeah, there are so few people queuing up to buy food. Now I eat as much as I can. But how do I know when the canteen is as empty as now? Maybe I need something that can keep me updated about the situation in the canteen. This is why we come up with our second application, the Canteen Monitor. This app makes use of Google App Engine, Python 2.7, and Jinja template. This is, this is the interface of the app. The website framework is built using Bootstrap. As our school has 16 canteen stores, we arrange them in a 4x4 layout. For each store, the number of people who are eating and the percentage of people upon total will be displayed. 
when we choose to eat at this store, what we, what we do is that we find out the store count by the store ID, time and day, and add the number of people by one. And when we click on the More Info link, this is the interface shown below. The current number of people, average number of people, and average percentage will be displayed. And the top four most popular stores are highlighted with a red border. This is done by ordering the stores by the number of, uh, number of people eating at this point in time in descending order. The store ID is stored. <laughs> so many pounds. And in HTML, what we do is that we make use of Jinja template. If the store, if the store ID is within the top store, the red border will be applied. And we have to regularly update the statistics, and we uh, we store the total count, total percentage, and in order to uh, take the average, we also start the week number. We use Google App Engine Chrome service to schedule time tasks. Uh, in fact, we uh, we update the statistics every day at zero, uh, yeah, at twelve a.m. Uh, the the Chrome service is stored in the file Chrome.yaml. And we have a more advanced option, which is to choose when do you want to eat what. Uh, and this is only uh, this is only done by by uh, by by changing the time. It's quite simple. And in the future, we would like to install Raspberry Pi with camera sensor uh, in the canteen in order to give students a better view of what is really happening in the canteen. And now Chamu will be elaborating on our third project. Thank you. Um, the third project is called Lecture A. And for most of the high schools in Singapore, we adopted the uh, lecture tutorial system, which means that and the content knowledge of a subject is delivered during lectures. So during these lectures, uh, we have a habit of taking pictures of what uh, of the teacher's slides. And um, this raises a problem that uh, many of these uh, images are blurred, and even if you enlarge it, you cannot read them very easily. And so. As a normal student, there are many ways to solve this. We, we may just uh, ask the teacher about the content or just drop the teacher the email. But as a computing student who possesses a true hacker spirit, we say that why don't we write a program to automate this? So it is a good opportunity to, for us to uh, learn new things and apply what we've learned. So let's move on to the project, taking this picture as an example. The first thing we need to do is noise reduction. And there are a lot of ways to achieve this. And what, what I chose here is the Gaussian blur filter, which remains most of, the, uh, most of the features of the image. In case this does not show very clearly, I just uh, randomly add some noise, basically white dots onto the picture. So it takes a random position and adds n numbers of white dots onto the picture. And after applying the Gaussian blur filter, you can see that you can see that uh, it is the, the the noise has been significantly reduced. So it shows that it works. Then the second uh, step is uh, corner detection. We need to detect the four corners of the slide in order to zoom into the slide for future um, analysis. So uh, the function I used here is Harris corner detection. So uh, it it makes use of the uh, the corners and edges of a picture will behave differently when the picture image is dilated and eroded. So it makes use of this and returns all the um, returns a mask containing all the points that it is considered as a corner. So what we are only interested in is the four points falling in the detection zone. So the the four corners will be stored in an array. And actually, the four points are consisted of many pixels. So we need to, um, need to get the average of, of all the coordinates of each pixel. 
So um, here's a code. It, it basically just you know, get the average of the pixels. Yeah. So f for a more accurate decaching. So after we have um, obtained the four points, we um, the image will run through a, a through a perspective transformation, so it can zoom into the um, world. And yeah, the function is uh, the here the get perspective transform. And after we have uh, increased the contrast and making the background pure white, so it finally obtain something that's good for um, filter analysis. So as most of the as most of the OCR programs do, uh, I uh, we need we need to first uh, divide the picture into horizontal lines. So we ap apply a threshold and a uh, tiny uh, edge detection to the image uh, to outline the image and uh, sorry and. Okay, there's a, a, there's a slight missing, let me see. There's uh, actually, mm, there's a slight missing there, sorry. Um, we make use of the whole line detection function. So the whole line detection function will just return an array of lines that, that is represented by a point and an angle. So it will re return all the, uh, uh, all the lines that uh, satisfy the minimum point requirement, which means that uh, there's a variable, maybe uh, it's, uh, let's call it x. So if x equals to 100, it will return all the points that. Um, so they are mini uh, they uh, represent the minimum number of points that need to be fall on the line for it to be detected. So um, we we need to calculate the average of the lines that we have detected, so it will uh, separate the image into into horizontal stripes. So the development of this app seems to be stuck at this stage because uh, normally the OCR programs, uh, what the OCR programs does is uh, they separate them into lines, then further separate the image into different characters for it to be analyzed. But in this case, the words are blurred. So we cannot. So I've tried to apply filters on the image, um, but it does not work because um, either the sharpening is not uh, effective or the um, features of the words are lost. So, so I try to look at the problem from a different perspective. That if I instead of trying to sharpen the image, blur the blur the image uh, library that I have, the character library that I have, so they can be uh, directly used for straight, uh, used for comparison straight away. So with this method in mind, uh, the first thing I need to do is to get, get uh, how blur the image is. So let's compare a letter, a very blurred letter with a deep, uh, less blurred one. And yeah, sorry. And the difference will be more and obvious if we apply two threshold onto the image. And basically the edge difference between the two images indicates how blurred the image is. So uh, in order to find the uh, find the relationship relationship between the diameter of Gaussian blur and the edge difference, I made a lot of simulations on Photoshop and finally obtained the curve. As you can see, the increase of the gradient of the curve is, seems to be not exponential. So I used a quadratic equation to um, to show the approximation of a curve. And here, the variable d represents the get edge difference, and the c is the uh, equation I used to calculate all the diameter for oh the size of here. <laughs> This is the uh, slide for the previous one. The result of the whole line detection is quite messy, so we set a set a, a condition for it to apply only the horizontal lines and they calculate the average of each lines. Yeah, so so the result is like this. Uh, after we get the 
uh, among, uh, the Gaussian blur uh, diameter using using the equation I have. Um, we, I tr uh, try to apply it onto the image clear uh, character library that I have, and it shows that the degree of blur is quite uh, well simulated. So at least the starting point is around the same, so it can be used for direct comparison. So what uh, now we have obtained is the coordinates for all the lines and the starting point of each line and also uh, the degree of, uh, and also how blur the image is. So we can move on to comparing. The comparison process can be uh, demonstrated using this this animation. So the characters are um, compared two by two so that the area that they are merged together are also con taken into consideration. Yeah, so it's two by two. So the program runs for around two minutes two minutes for the first paragraph to down to be done. So it's quite actually quite long but um so you solve the problem that normal um, OCR programs do not solve because um, they require a very clear image. Like if if you upload the image, the same image onto Google Drive with the OCR option on, you can only get straight lines. Yeah. So of course this pro this can be this um, program can be further in, in improved by incorporating machine learning. Uh, algorithm and also the some auto correction tools and also it can be further improved to deal with more complex uh, situations and there's still a very long way before it can be used in reality for our students but however uh, and at this stage what really uh, what is really important is it's not get an impeccable solution to the problem, but actually what I've learned and, and applied during the process that benefit us the most. Yeah, so thank you. So. Often computing is deemed to be so different from other subjects and being the only class of uh, computing students in uh, across the whole level in Dama High, we are definitely the minority group. Maybe high school students feel it too difficult for them to um, understand all the codes, and maybe they just don't have the curiosity to look at what is behind all these fascinating inventions of technology. Yet to us, after all the mini creations we have done, certainly inclusive of the three applications we presented just now, Mm, it feels so strongly to us that computing and even technology is not far away from us. By being observant to our surroundings, learning of awesome programming, uh, computing knowledge such as Python language has presented us so many possibilities um, to make a difference to our life. Maybe this is just the charm of being a programmer. At this time, we would like to express our heartful gratitude to our school and especially for computing teacher for all the care and support offered to us. And of course, the organizer of PyCon Taiwan 2014 for, um, to give us this rest opportunity to, for, um, to, to present our thoughts here in Taipei. We will surely continue to pass on this spirit of learning and hopefully inspire more people to take a step forward. And thank you for your attention. And this, come to the, uh, this has come to the end of our presentation. Okay. Okay, uh, thank you. We'd like to now invite questions from the audience. If, if you can speak into the mic directly in front of you. No questions?
Uh, yeah, and here is our GitHub. Uh, our code will be shared uh, after this talk. And here's our uh, GitHub account yeah, uh, uh, address. Yeah, if you are interested. And okay. Uh, and if you want to know more about us and our curriculum, there's another talk after this uh, by our peers. Yeah, talking uh, about our high school curriculum. Yeah. Okay, uh, if not, uh, I think in view of time constraint, uh, yeah, time is up. So um, we will thank the speakers again, and yeah, we'll proceed to the next talk. Thanks very much.